All right, let's do this. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. This is the first in a series of Megan Mondays, coming on the heels of an article that I wrote for Iridescent Women Magazine that I will link in the description below. But it basically is chronicling the journey that I'm undertaking with my own personal body from now until my 40th birthday next July in 2021. It is currently September of 2020, so just under a year. And the reason why I'm chronicling this is because I am a certified nutritional therapy practitioner and a CrossFit coach and personal trainer. I operate in what I consider to be kind of the holistic side of the wellness and fitness space. And I spend a lot of time helping women break down mindsets and limiting beliefs and roadblocks as a result of our diet culture in this country. Um, I so rebel against the notion that a woman's value is in her physical appearance and that the smaller that physical appearance is, the more valuable she is. So both of those ideas are something that I have been coming up against and researching and coaching people through for the better part of a decade. All of that being said, it's been difficult for me to feel authentic and also undertake my own body reshaping process or goals at the same time. It felt kind of hypocritical to me. So I've had a very long process of teasing apart my own value, my own personal worth from my physical appearance. And now that I feel like I've done that, it's difficult for me to tell people, to tell my followers or my clients out of one side of my mouth to love yourself exactly where you are right now, which is absolutely true, but then also have them see me go through an intentional fat loss kind of protocol. So I just never wanted to be conflicting in my messaging. I never wanted um, to seem hypocritical or inauthentic, but I am at a place now where I have decided that losing 20 pounds of fat is what is right for my body. It's what I want to do. And I'm gonna tell you the four reasons why I'm undertaking this process. First and foremost, let me just get some statistics and some numbers and some pictures kind of set the stage for where I am now because I have done so much work teasing apart my value from my physical appearance that I wanna model for you what that can feel and look like. So I have no problem telling you, I weigh 155.4 pounds right now. I'm 39 years old, five foot three, and an avid CrossFitter, so a good chunk of that is actually muscle, but definitely not all of it. I have a fat loss goal of approximately 20 pounds. I'm also gonna put up the pictures that I took this morning because again, I really want I really want us as women to start to tease apart our value from how we look. So there's some softness there. There's a little bit of love handle action spilling over the top of my shorts. There, the, the back definitely looks different than how I thought it did because I don't see myself from the back very often. There's some cellulite, there's some lumps and bumps, and I am totally okay showing you this picture because it is not how valuable I am to the world. That is, a, that is a spiritual thing. There is an eternal, complex Megan that is valuable just because she exists. And this happens to be what the package looks like right now. It's the same as if I wouldn't be embarrassed to show you a picture of my split ends. Like that doesn't say anything about who I am as a person and neither does my body. So if I am somebody that loves my body, is happy with myself, knows that my value is intrinsic and not equivalent to the package I come in in the world, if I've done all of that emotional work to get to that place, then why even bother to lose the 20 pounds in the first place? I'm healthy, I'm not taking any medications, I could get pregnant at the drop of a hat if I wanted to, which I do not, but I could. A fertility is a sign of, of feminine health. My husband is attracted to me. Like there is, there is no medical reason for me to endeavor to lose 20 pounds of fat. So it would be purely, really an aesthetic choice that seems to go against everything I was talking about, about the dangers of diet culture. But here are the four reasons why it's okay with me and I'm actually excited about the process. So number one, I have a closet full of clothes that fit a 135 pound body and I miss them. <laughs> So for most of my adult life, I actually have weighed somewhere between 125 and 135 prior to having children. Then I began CrossFit and I started gaining some muscle over a period of a few years. I probably put on about eight to 10 pounds of lean mass, also gaining a few pounds of fat with each subsequent year. That's just kind of common, um, especially 
once you get into the childbearing years. And so by the time I was in my early 30s, I had two toddlers. I bounced around between 135 and 140 pretty effortlessly. Fast forward to 2017, I was getting a little burnt out on CrossFit. I had a bucket list item of doing a bodybuilding show. I was interested in bodybuilding style training. So I decided to quit CrossFit for a while, switch up my training, do some bodybuilding, and I entered a bikini competition hired a coach, and so I was measuring my food for the first time in my life, weighing out proteins and carbs and fats, and I had a certain calorie goal I had to hit each day. I was also adding cardio sessions. We worked up to a place where I was doing one in the morning, weightlifting in the afternoon, and then another cardio session at night. So there was a period of time in my training where I was doing three a days and eating zero grams of fat, like baked white fish and plain asparagus kind of situation. It was probably around 1,000 calories a day super not healthy, do not recommend that. I entered the stage at 130 pounds, and I'll show you some pictures of what that looked like. A far cry from where I am right now at 155, and I felt good, I was happy, I came in second to last, 16 out of 17 girls in my division, I did not care, I was just happy that I had checked my bucket list item, and on we went. So right now I'm still on my first reason why I wanna lose those 20 pounds of fat, and it's because previously in my life, most of my clothes fit a 135 pound body and I have jeans and shorts and dresses and lots of things that I haven't worn in a couple of years and I would like to have them back. Number two is I have some performance goals. I told you I was a CrossFitter, took a break for bodybuilding. I've been back into it for a couple of years now, maybe a year and a half and I love it, but I feel kind of slow. I'm pretty strong under the barbell and I'm happy with my lifts. I definitely have some more strength gains that I would like to make, but primarily my goal is to do better at push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups on the rig, um, toes to bar, eventually get my muscle up, I like to run faster. Those types of things that I want to get better at in CrossFit would do better with a smaller package. So in order to be a better CrossFit athlete, I would do better to be a little bit lighter, to lose some fat and retain or build the muscle mass that I already have. And the third reason is because my metabolic rate is pretty slow right now and it's only going to get worse as I age. So basically what happens is your body is super smart and it wants to protect you at all times. That's another key piece of biology that I love to teach, especially women. Your body never betrays you. It is never against you. It's not something that you need to punish or berate or hate. Your body is always trying to protect you. Everything it ever does is for your own good. It's keeping you alive in the moment. So metabolic adaptation is this situation where there's less fuel coming in and more energy output being required. And so it's going to start down regulate how much calories it will burn, how much energy it will waste when you do simple activities. So you'll start fidgeting less, you'll start burning less calories doing the same exact workout that you did before. So somebody with a high metabolic rate can run three miles and burn way more calories than somebody with a low metabolic rate who runs those same three miles. Your body protects you because it doesn't want you to waste away. So all of these mechanisms that decide if fat will be stored or burned, how fast it will be stored or burned, um, if muscle mass will be built or wasted away, all of those hormonal decisions that are made by this very complicated brain that we have, all of those things have have culminated in a situation where I had too little calories coming in for too long of a period of time, even before the bodybuilding show. It's really common that women are under caloried for many, many years, especially coming from a diet mentality. So that was my story leading up to the bodybuilding show. And then I made it even worse with that huge calorie deficit. And so I have a slow metabolic rate. And then after the show, I back down off of all the cardio and I start adding in a normal amount of food on a slow metabolic rate, and so then you gain back everything you lost and then some, because now your muscle mass is lower as well. So I went from 130 pounds on show day to 155 pounds in less than two months. That is a really fast rebound. And my body has protected that new 155 set point ever since. That has been my body weight no matter how much I eat, no matter how little I eat, no matter how much I work out, no matter how little I work out for the last two and a half years. So the third reason that I'm on right now about why I want to intentionally undergo a 20 pound fat loss is because I know my metabolic rate has down regulated over time and it's only going to continue to get worse as I age. So I'm going to take an intentional period of time to restore that metabolism so that I can fight the natural downgrading of it as we age. 
The fourth reason is that I have a personality, and maybe you do too, where I get really excited about bright, shiny new things, new endeavors, new projects, new relationships, new people. I love new, I love new things. So I get real excited, but then I also tend to drop off after a period of time. So I have started developing this tape in my head of I can't stick with things, I always quit. Um, this kind of negative feedback loop that goes through my brain. And so doing something that's gonna take a really long period of time is gonna build discipline and trust in myself. So I know that when I wanna chip away at a hard goal, I can look back and say, remember when you didn't wanna do that thing before, you did it anyways, and it builds trust. And so I can take on the next risk, take on the next challenge, because I've built that trust with myself that even when I didn't feel like it, I was able to do it anyways, because I'm a grown up. So here's the plan. I'm currently in a period that's known as a reverse diet. So I took a couple of weeks and logged intermittently, not every morsel and not every day, but I logged intermittently what I was eating throughout the day in my fitness pal. Just, I just use the free version of the app. I find it to be totally sufficient. And I was finding that there were days I would eat 1,000 calories and days I would eat 1,700 calories and then everything in between. If I wasn't paying attention, who knows? But I never was eating, 1,700 was a big, was a large food day for me during that time when I was logging my food. So that is where I started my reverse diet. I intentionally made myself eat no less than 1,700 calories every single day for a full week. And then I added 100 calories. So the next week, I intentionally let myself eat no less than 1,800 calories every single day for a week. I'm now in a period of 1,900. So I will, I will eat no less than 1,900 calories every day this week. And I'm gonna keep on going until my body tells me that I have reached an amount that it can no longer burn and it starts to store fat. So the idea is that in a reverse diet, you're going so incrementally slow that your body can keep up with it, it can adapt to that, rather than me just saying, oh my gosh, I was only eating 1,200 calories a day, that's not enough. I'm gonna start eating 2,200 calories every day right away. I would obviously store some fat if I were to do that. So the reverse diet takes longer, but it allows you to increase fuel without increasing body fat. So I'm weighing myself every single day. Again, back to the pictures, there is no value in my body weight. There's no value in my split ends. There are two ounces of iced coffee left in my glass and I weigh 155 pounds this morning. Like those are, those are data points. They can be approached without emotion if you practice it. And so daily body weight weighing helps me disentangle the value from the number on the scale. It's just a data point. So I'm weighing myself daily and taking my measurements weekly so I will know if my waist measurements start to increase and my body weight is going up for a period of several days, then I will know that that is probably a calorie level that is too much for my body at this moment. And so then I'll back off of that. So say that happened at 2200 calories, I would back down to 2100 and I would call that my maintenance. And then I'm gonna stay at maintenance for months, at least three, but maybe six because I have a history of eating too little for decades, and that is not something I can undo in a 30-day challenge. So I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time in this 155-pound body that I love, so it's fine, but I can't be in a rush to get to the cut until I've gone through the period of intentionally refeeding my metabolism and convincing my brain and my thyroid that it's safe to start wasting and burning calories again and oxidizing fat that it, it's not gonna need that because there's gonna be more fuel coming in. I have to build that trust with those systems. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse my way up to hopefully 2,200 calories. That's an amount of food that I would like to be at when I start a cut later next spring. So I'm gonna reverse up as long as I can and I'll keep you updated every Monday how my body is responding. I'm at 1,900 calories right now. Body weight is holding steady, so I've already increased my food by quite a bit from what I was eating this time last month. And so then at the 2200 calorie mark, I'm hoping I get to stay there for a few months and then I will start a concerted cut where I will back off of that by about 20% of calories and then I'll hang out there for no more than 12 weeks. Whatever happens, happens. Whether I get to my goal weight, whether I can see an ab, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut for 12 weeks and then we're gonna celebrate the crap out of my 40th birthday and then I'm gonna reverse back up to those calories again. It'll all make more sense as you continue to follow along with these updates, which I hope you do. So please hit the subscribe button, make sure that you're getting notifications, 
so you never miss a Megan Monday. And I would love to hear from you in the comments below here on YouTube. Let me know, have you ever heard of a reverse diet? Have you ever spent a concerted period of time in maintenance, nourishing your body? Or have you been dieting pretty much your entire adult life, always in a cut? Let me know, let's talk about it. I would love for you to follow along as I'm doing my own journey. I'll see you next week.